Hey everyone, today we're diving into the world of the Certified Information Security Manager Certification or CISM in short. So what exactly is the CISM? Well, it's a top tier professional certification tailored specifically for leaders in the information security field. Unlike other security certifications like the CISSP, the CISM focuses more on honing your management and leadership skills rather than just technical aspects. All right, let's dive into what we're going to cover today. First up, we'll explore the system certification itself and discover how you can become certified. Next, we'll tackle the part that might be causing you some anxiety, the exam. And finally, once you've earned that certification, we'll discuss what you need to do to maintain it and keep your skills sharp. Ready to get started? Then let's jump right in. Okay, let's talk about the system certification and learn why it's such a big deal. The CISM certification has been around for almost 20 years and over 65,000 professionals have earned this credential. It's globally recognized and ensures that an organization's information security program aligns perfectly with its broader strategic goals. Essentially, it's the gold standard for those who develop, build and manage enterprise information security programs. In 2020, the CISM certification won the prestigious SC award for best professional certification program, marking the second time in three years it received this honor. It also ranks sixth among the top 15 highest paying IT certifications according to the 2021 IT skills and salary report by Global Knowledge with an average salary in the United States of almost 150,000 US dollars. Currently, there are over 47,000 CISM certification holders worldwide. So if you're aiming for a career in information security management, then the system certification is an excellent choice. It's a testament to your skills, knowledge and commitment to the field. Plus, it gives you a competitive edge in the job market and opens up new opportunities for career advancement. Now, while technical knowledge is undoubtedly crucial, the system certification takes a unique approach. It focuses on developing your ability to assess risks, implement effective governance and respond to security incidents, all while aligning your organization's information security program with its broader strategic goals. Now, the system exam consists of 150 questions covering four key domains. The domains are information security governance, information security risk management, information security program development and management, and information security incident management. Each domain makes up a specific percentage of the exam as shown by these donut diagrams. So this management focused approach truly sets the system apart, making it an excellent choice for those looking to advance their careers in information security management. Now the system certification is administered by ISACA, a global professional association and learning organization. With over 165,000 members, ISACA specializes in digital trust areas such as information security, governance, assurance, risk, privacy and quality. ISACA has a presence in 188 countries and has 225 chapters worldwide. It's renowned for providing top-notch guidance, credentials, education, training and fostering a vibrant community. So whether you're looking to advance your career or stay updated with the latest trends in the field, ISACA is your go-to resource. Now, to cater to its professional community worldwide, ISACA has established three offices located in North America, Europe, and China. You can find more information about ISACA and what they have to offer on ISACA.org. Next, let's find out how to become a Certified Information Security Manager. So, there are four requirements you need to fulfill to acquire the SISM certification. First, you need to pass the SISM exam, which tests your knowledge in four domains information security governance, risk management, information security program, and incident management. Second, you need to fulfill the experience requirements, which means demonstrating sufficient professional experience in information security management. This can be done through a combination of education and work experience. Third, you need to adhere to ISACA's code of professional ethics, which sets the standard for the conduct of information security professionals. And finally, you need to adhere to the continuous professional education policy, which requires you to maintain your knowledge and skills through ongoing professional development. So let's have a brief look at each of these requirements. Now, the most intimidating requirement is of course, passing the exam. Before actually taking the exam, there are a couple of organizational steps necessary. The first step is to register, which you can do at any time. After that, 
you'll need to pay the exam fee and schedule your exam. Now it's important to note that scheduling cannot be done without paying the fee first. At the time of recording, Isaka members are charged $560 compared to $760 for non-members. Next comes the preparation stage. You'll need to learn and master the four job practice domains. Of course, you can start learning before registering or even scheduling an exam. However, most people tend to start when they feel the pressure of the exam they're approaching. Now, at some point, it's time to take the exam. We'll cover the actual exam in more depth in the next lecture, but for now, you have to know that it's a multiple choice or more of a single choice format and consists of 150 questions. Now, in order to pass the exam, you need to achieve a final score of at least 450. But like I said, more about that in the next lecture. Now, besides passing the exam, you also have to demonstrate sufficient professional experience in order to become a certified information security manager. Now, the system certification requires you to have at least five years of experience in information security management. The experience must be earned in at least three of the four job practice domains, especially for beginners or professionals who have recently transitioned into an information security management position, demonstrating five years of experience can be a daunting obstacle. For this reason, applicants are allowed to include up to two years of general information security experience, as well as one substitution waiver worth up to two years as well. This means you can substitute missing work experience with other professional certifications, postgraduate degrees in a relevant field, and more. Just make sure your work experience has been completed within a 10-year period before the application. Now make sure to check Isaka's website for the most up-to-date experience requirements. Covering all exceptions and possibilities for substitution would go beyond the scope of this video. Now adhering to the code of professional ethics is a crucial requirement to become a system certified professional. Isaka has set forth this code to guide the professional and personal conduct of its members and certification holders. Now, the code outlines the fundamental principles of ethical behavior such as honesty, objectivity, and confidentiality, which are all essential for a successful career in information security management. As a system certified professional, you are expected to uphold these principles and maintain the highest level of integrity in all your professional endeavors. You can find the complete code of professional ethics on Isaka's website. So make sure to review it thoroughly and incorporate it into your professional conduct to become a certified system professional. Last but not least, you need to adhere to the continuous professional education policy, which requires you to maintain your knowledge and skills through ongoing professional development. Obtaining a system certification is not a one-time effort, but more of an ongoing journey. As a certified information security manager, you are required to obtain and report a certain amount of CPE hours to demonstrate your ongoing commitment towards the evolution of the profession. We will cover this topic in more depth right after this part of the call. Now, applying for the SISM certification involves several steps. First, you need to pass the exam. Once you have passed the exam, you need to report your work experience. This involves providing information on your professional experience in information security management, which should correspond to the four job practice domains. After reporting your work experience, you need to ask your current and previous employers to verify your relevant work experience. Next, you need to submit an application processing payment. Then you'll need to review and sign the terms and conditions agreement. This relates then to the adherence of the CPE policy and code of ethics, among others. Finally, once all of that is done, you can then submit your application. For more information on how to submit your application, please visit isaka.org for the latest information. Now, life can be unpredictable, from unexpected job rotations to private matters. You never know what's going to happen. But with the SISM certification, you have a certain degree of flexibility. After you register, you have up to a year to take the exam, giving you enough time to prepare and adjust your schedule accordingly. Even after passing the exam, you may still need some more professional experience before you are eligible to acquire the certification. Now, the good news is that you have up to five years from passing the exam to fulfill this requirement and submit your application. If you miss these deadlines, 
you might have to retag the exam or pay additional fees. So watch out and stay organized. Next up, let's talk about the exam, which is probably bothering you the most. Now, the system exam is a challenging exam for sure that tests your knowledge and expertise in information security management. It consists of 150 multiple choice questions that you have to complete in only four hours. The exam is available in four languages, Chinese, Simplified, English, Spanish, and Japanese. The scoring system for the system exam ranges from 200 to 800 with a minimum score of 450 required to pass the exam. It's important to note that the exam is designed to test your knowledge and experience in four specific domains. The domains are information security governance, information security risk management, information security program, and incident management. Each domain makes up a certain percentage of the exam. So for example, 30% of the exam will be about incident management, which means you can expect around 45 questions about that topic. Now, each question in the SISM exam has a stem, which is the actual question or an incomplete statement. Sometimes even a little scenario might be provided to add more context to the question. Now, the questions are all presented in a multiple choice format, meaning you will have a few answer choices to choose from for each question. Your task is to select the correct or best answer from the options provided. This means sometimes more than one answer is correct, but only the best answer is supposed to be selected. Now, to select the best answer, you should look out for keywords like best, worst, most, and so on. Now, in this example, we are asked the following question. Which of these scenarios would be the biggest obstacle to successfully implementing security governance? Now, the options provided all seem to make sense, meaning all of them are sort of an obstacle to successfully implementing information security governance in an organization. However, the lack of high-level sponsorship is by far the biggest obstacle as top management has the power to assign more budget and rearrange business priorities. And this is how you have to approach these questions. Select the best, worst, most, or whatever answer it is. Now the exam is computerized, meaning right after you have submitted your final answer and marked the test as completed, you will be provided with a pass or fail status. The scores for each job practice domain are scaled. This means not all questions count the same. In other words, you can't assume that the number of questions you are required to answer correctly. Scores range from 200 to 800. In order to pass the exam, you need to achieve a score of 450. The system exam is offered in two ways remote proctored testing, and on-site testing. Remote proctored testing has been introduced recently due to the COVID-19 pandemic, and it allows candidates to take the exam from the comfort of their own homes. On the other hand, on-site testing requires candidates to travel to a designated testing center to take the exam. Remote proctored testing allows for greater flexibility in scheduling the exam, as it can be taken at any time of day, whereas on-site testing is typically only offered during specific hours at designated testing centers. However, remote proctored testing requires candidates to have a reliable internet connection and a quiet, distraction-free environment, as they will be monitored by a remote proctor throughout the exam. On-site testing provides a more traditional testing experience, where candidates can take the exam in a controlled environment under the supervision of an on-site proctor. This option may be preferable for those who prefer a structured testing environment or who may not have access to a suitable environment for remote testing. Now, while remote proctor testing and on-site testing both have their pros and cons, it's important to choose the option that best suits your needs and circumstances. Last but not least, let's talk about how to maintain a certification once you have passed the exam and have finally been granted the prestigious award. Now, a system certification requires more than just a one-time effort. Professionals have to commit to ongoing education in order to maintain the certification. Failure to comply with the continuing education or ISACA's code of conduct can lead to the loss of the certification. To remain eligible to carry the system certificate, you are required to pay the annual maintenance fees and report a sufficient number of CPE hours. Now, CPE stands for Continuing Professional Education. The purpose of CPE is to encourage professionals to remain up to date on the latest trends, best practices, 
and technologies in their field of expertise. This enables them to perform their jobs more effectively, provide better service to their clients or employers, and stay relevant in an ever-changing industry. Now, in order to maintain your certification, a system professional is required to earn a certain number of CPE credits every year. These credits are earned by participating in various activities, such as attending conferences, seminars, and training courses, giving presentations, publishing articles, or even volunteering for professional organizations. Here you can see some examples for activities that qualify for continuing professional education. And here is even some more examples for qualifying activities. Again, please visit isaka.org for further information on CPE activities and learn what is qualified and what is not. CPE hours are calculated by dividing the actual activity time by 50. So here in this example, an individual has participated in a qualifying activity from 8 in the morning till 4 p.m. Minus the lunch break, a total of 7 hours was invested in CPE. This results in a total 8.4 CPE hours. Now, to maintain your system certification, you must earn a minimum of 20 CPE credits annually and a total of 120 CPE credits over a three-year certification cycle. The certification period for newly certified systems begins on January 1st of the year following the certification. During the year of certification, reporting CPE hours is not necessary. However, any hours earned between the date of certification and December 31st of that year can be used and reported as hours earned in the initial reporting period. Now, to maintain a system certification, it's also important to keep records of all reported CPE activities, which should be supported by proper documentation. The documentation must be kept for at least 12 months after the end of each three-year reporting cycle. Acceptable forms of documentation include a letter, a certificate of completion, an attendance roster, a verification of attendance form, or any other independent proof of completion. Each record must include certain details, such as the attendee's name, the name of the organization sponsoring the activity, the title and description of the activity, the date it took place, and the number of CPE hours earned or claimed. Keeping accurate records of those details is essential to demonstrate compliance with the CISM certification requirements. Again, make sure to visit isaka.org for the most up-to-date information on how to maintain your certification. And that's what you need to know about the CISM certification.